and welcome back to the Keys Kiss channel. And I'm Miss Keys. We are back for another episode in our In Between the Lines series. That's where we go in between the lines and search for the theme. Remember, theme is the message, the moral, or the lesson the author wanted you to take away from the story. Now, we are on the last week of March, meaning we are finishing up Women's History Month. But that doesn't mean you can't celebrate all year. Now, for Women's History Month, we were reading different books about different women in history who have changed the world for the better. And for today, we are reading the phenomenal story called Dinosaur Lady, The Daring Discoveries of Mary Anning, the First Paleontologist by Linda Skears, illustrated by Martha McGinnis. I am so excited to share this book with you. Kind of because I love dinosaurs. So I'm going to stop running my mouth. Are you guys ready to read? Well then put on your reading hats and let's go. Dinosaur Lady, The Daring Discoveries of Mary Anning, the first paleontologist by Linda Skears, pictures by Martha McGinnis. Mary Anning dodged high tides and crashing waves to scour the beach near her hometown of Lyme Regis, England. She filled her basket with curiosities to sell to tourists, like seashells and fossils with fanciful local names like snake stones, ammonites, devil toenails, Belemonites and angel wings. She scrambled over crumbling cliffs and rocky peaks while avoiding life-threatening landslides. Despite the constant danger, Mary wasn't afraid. She was determined to uncover the area's long buried secrets, no matter the risks. Mary learned to read and write at Sunday school but she wanted to learn more. She had so many questions about the bones and fossils she found, and she needed answers. She borrowed books and copied scientific papers. She sketched intricate drawings of her discoveries, and she made notes, lots and lots of notes. One morning when Mary and her brother were exploring cliffs, they saw something surprising. Nestled in the rock was a large eye socket looking right back at them. Carefully, they chiseled away dirt and stone to expose a four foot long head with a pointed snout, massive jaw, hundreds of teeth. It was frightening, but Mary wasn't scared. She was fascinated. They coaxed workers from the village to help dig it out and carry it home. While the men returned to their work, Mary set out to find the creature's body. The cliffs were constantly shifting and sliding. It had to be buried nearby, but where? Day after day, Mary scrambled over the cliffs. Week after week, she searched, month after month. After almost a year, Mother Nature lent Mary a helping hand. The powerful wind and pounding rain from a devastating storm caused several landslides. In one night, the cliff's ancient layers were exposed, layers that would have taken Mary years to uncover with her hammer and chisel. Something caught Mary's eyes. Bones. Boldly, Mary chipped away and uncovered ribs. Vertebrae. Flippers. Was it a crocodile? Fish? Lizard? No. Mary had discovered a creature never seen before. Was she scared? No, not at all. But many villagers were. Soon they were talking about Mary's monster. Word traveled to a rich collector who offered to buy the skeleton. Mary hated to see it go, but the money would help the Anning family survive for months. The collector donated it to a London museum and scientists and geologists flocked to the exhibit. They studied it, calculated, debated. They named it, bear with me, you guys. It the 
Brontosaurus, which meant fish lizard. The word dinosaur hadn't even been invented yet. They made an announcement that shocked the world. Mary's find wasn't just odd, it was millions of years old. Their declaration shattered the commonly held belief that the earth was only 6,000 years old. Also, no one had realized that a species could become extinct until they studied the remains of a creature that no longer walked the earth. While others discussed, discussed her discovery, Mary kept exploring and learning. Over the years, Mary also found many odd, dark, lumpy pebbles inside skeletons. She examined them, reread her notes, studied her drawings. Mary figured out what they were, except it was something a lady shouldn't talk about. But Mary was more of a scientist than a proper lady. So she proclaimed these stones, known as bezoars, were actually fossilized poop. Geologists sneered, scientists scoffed. Then they took a closer look and realized she was right. Mary's discovery helped scholars learn more about what ancient creatures ate. Mary also found many long, thin, cone-shaped fossils. They were unremarkable, ordinary, at least on the outside. Curious, she cut one open. Tucked inside was a small pocket filled with a thick, dark substance. Mary was even more curious now. Adding a few drops of water turned the substance into ink. Mary's discovery proved that ancient aquatic creatures squirted ink to hide themselves from hungry predators. When Mary was 24, she made another amazing discovery. This creature didn't have legs or flippers. It had wings. Mary had unearthed a prehistoric flying reptile called a pterosaur. Around the world, scientists were talking about Mary's incredible discoveries, but they weren't talking about Mary, not at first. Even though Mary could identify a species, species from one single bone and rebuild entire skeletons like a jigsaw puzzle, she couldn't join the Geological Society of London. Women were not allowed. She couldn't attend lectures or teach university classes or even take classes. But Mary knew her discoveries were important and would change the way people viewed the Earth's past. And so did many geologists, scientists, and scholars. Because where did they go when they had questions? Straight to Mary's cottage. Eager to learn more, they followed her over the cliffs, even if it terrified them. And it did. Just like long buried fossils, Mary's achievements have slowly been uncovered and shared with the world. Her daring discoveries helped form paleontology, the branch of geology that uses fossils to study prehistoric life. And she did all that with a homemade hammer, a chisel, and a never ending quest to fearlessly keep exploring and learning. The end. I am so excited to end Women's History Month with this phenomenal book. Mary Anning is a perfect role model about being extraordinary. But before I get ahead of myself, what do you think the theme was of Dinosaur Lady? Well, for me, the theme of this story was to go out and be fearless. No matter who tells you you can't do this or you can't do that, stay strong, be exactly who you are, and be fearless in your pursuit to be amazing. And I think that is a theme for Women's History Month. All these women were told no just because they're women. But did that stop them? Not even a little bit. These women were fearless and brave and strong. 
So as we complete Women's History Month, I want you to take those three words with you. Go out, be fearless, be brave, and be strong. On Monday on the Keys Kids channel Instagram, you'll find our first book for the month of April. And then on Saturday, right here on the Keys Kids channel YouTube, you'll find me reading to you. Please don't forget to go like, subscribe, and share with everyone you know. And leave a comment below. Let me know who your role model is for Women's History Month. Other than that, you guys, it's time to go. But no worries, because I'm going to see you guys next week on the Keys Kids channel. Bye!